Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Adam from Global Abundance LLC, back with another video. On this channel, we talk real estate, commercial and residential, along with some mindset training and financial literacy content. So if you find this information useful, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe and share. We also have a free VIP group where a tight knit community of people just like yourself dissect and go deep into different aspects of real estate. It's free to join and I look forward to seeing you there. So I'll leave the link in the uh, description below. Today's video is about unclaimed money. A lot of you know, uh, I got my start in real estate through researching surplus funds. So I'm going to give you an overview of some of these types of funds and a few resources you can use to find money that's owed to you. So let's get right to it. All right. So what exactly is unclaimed money or funds? Well, simply it's it's money being held by someone for someone else. All right. In the United States, money that's owed to individuals in a lot of cases ends up being is cheated to the state. Now, this practice is centuries old. And although we're you know talking about money here, it really relates to property as you know, in the you know, government holding your property slash money, you know, until you claim that money. All right. This made sense because the government was supposed to be transparent and had laws in place to govern their behavior and put an effort into finding these people owed money. Well, you know, it was created as a way for the government to skim money from the general population. I'm just going to keep it real with you. I want you to understand that concept because you soon realize that, you know, you don't want the government holding these funds. And I'm going to give you a few reasons why. Now, one reason is by government entities having these funds in their accounts. And uh, this gives the state specifically the opportunity to have a better credit rating and even take out loans on this capital. So, you know, these states are also able to keep the interest on these accounts and that can add up pretty quickly if you think about it. And I'm not talking about small numbers here. You know, there's billions with the capital B being held collectively across the United States right now. So most of the states can even spend the money. Why can they do that? Well, the state is only required to keep a percentage of the money because they know that only a handful of people will ever even find out about it and place a claim on it. Another reason is fees. If a certain state charges fees for you to claim the money, that essentially stops people from claiming their funds. If you're only owed, say, you know, $100 and the state charges a fee for you to claim, there's a higher chance you'll just move on and you know not put a claim in, which allows them to just keep the money. The third reason is because state governments don't make the type of effort they should in contacting people for the reasons that, that I just talked about. Now, here's the hard truth. The state has access to virtually all your information, <laughs> everything from social security numbers, voting records, you know, birth records, death records, uh, jury duty records, you know, utility bills and records, bank account information, all court documents, including, you know, lawsuits, land records, driver's license, DMV records, uh, tax information, and on and on and on and on and on. They can find anybody. So being informed is in your best interest, not theirs. I'm going to quickly talk about a few ways some of these type of funds get created. I'll also give you a few resources you can visit online to see if you have any money owed to you. So those resources will be for the entire United States. So if you've lived in multiple states, you may have money that's been cheated to the states uh, in those states or even at the local level. All right. So here's the deal. It's not just money that's being sent to the state. I'm talking about here because uh, before the funds even get to the state level, local counties collect a lot of these funds and hold on to it for some time before sending it to the uh, to the state. 
So the first one is unclaimed treasury bill payouts or HUD overpayments. Those are, you know, one type of funds that are created. Uh, some of you have unclaimed bank account deposits that you have available to you. After all, look, you made the deposit and it's your money. You have unclaimed court fees and parking tickets that you've overpaid for. You know, it might be hard to believe that, but it does happen. Now, this one is huge. It's unclaimed tax refunds from income and real property. You know, people are, are on the move a lot nowadays and don't keep track of, you know, the overpayments that, you know, you may have made in different places. Then there's unclaimed funds uh, from overages specifically created from tax and mortgage foreclosures. Now, my company helps claimants with these type of funds, and you can get more info on that at assetinform.com. Now, this is huge, and this money is owed to previous homeowners. Another source is paid judgments. When someone pays off a judgment against them, they usually pay it to the court. Judgments accrue interest, and when you pay it, the judgment gets recorded as paid to the court. The court uh, will then send the payment to the person that's owed the money, but here's the problem. Even though you you know the, even even though the courts have the resources to find you they you know only send a notice to the last address that they have on file so in the vast majority of cases you've been long gone from that address so what happens is is the money stays with the county until they are cheated to the state and judgments can expire so if you have a judgment do your research on the county and state it's in to find out if it's been paid or if it has expired. Next up, we have unclaimed insurance payouts for things like life insurance policies, uh, reimbursement checks from car accidents and payments uh, ordered by the court for you know, criminal cases and unused gift card money. Think about how many times you left a dollar or two on a gift card. So those are just a few ways money is created that goes unclaimed across the country. Now, based on what I've talked about so far, think about all the places that you've lived and spent time. Did you have any of the things that I talked about? Well, I'll tell you an example uh, that I had of money is cheated to the state. So back in late 1999, I briefly worked at UPS. It was probably you know, no longer than a month and a half at the most before I quit. Well, I was checking the state website after I got involved in surplus funds 10 years ago. And well, what do you know? There was an uncashed check there waiting on me to claim. So process was easy. And that was something like 14, 15 years later after I had worked there. So don't be afraid to go back as far as you can in your search. There's two websites you can use to check if you have some unclaimed funds at the state level. The first one is www.nupn.com and the second site is www.missingmoney.com. Both of these sites access various state databases and have information on unclaimed funds. So just visit those sites, click on the state you want to check in and fill in your information. Well, hey, that does it for this video. Now that you have an idea on what unclaimed funds are, a few ways they're created and a few resources to check for yourself, you can go out and see uh, what you got coming to you. All right. So I'm Adam signing off until next time.